Evening. Yeah. Poke at the holes in his story. Your name comes up yet again, Mr. DeMarco. This time in several emails addressed to Rabbi Zelig. So? So what's the deal? It wasn't me. It was another Joe. Can it? Sing another tune, because I'm sick of the old one. It's enough evidence to book you if I choose to go to the police. So are you gonna tell me what's going on? Joe DeMarco gave me the once-over. His dull, pale eyes explored my face. He knitted his eyebrows, as if doing some internal calculations, and then finally nodded. Fine. You want to talk? Let's talk. But not here. Follow me. <laughs> um... I follow you outside of the place where you probably murdered... Ethan Goldberg. I don't suppose I can... Anyone have a spare knife? Or gun? It's okay. I'll just use, I'll just use my razor-sharp rabbinical wit. That'll cut him. Come on, Rabbi. We'll have more privacy down here. This is shady as hell. Wait a minute, what is that on the ground? You pissed off the wrong people, Rabbi. That looks like something I need I to pick up to defend myself. But now, I gotta kill you. Mm-hmm. I see. You're an assassin. I had a feeling you were smart. Your people are in this very, very deep. My people? You mean the Jews? A very cozy operation. Rabbinical response. What sort of operation was this? Don't think I'll be doing that. Professional courtesy. Say goodbye. You think I'll go so easily? Don't make me laugh, old man. Do you really think you'll get away with this? Do you really think you'll get away with this? I've been getting away with this since I was 12 years old. Well, that's about to stop. How does a 12-year-old commit murders? How does a 12-year-old commit murder? Same as anyone. Someone asked me to, so I did. Jesus. Do you do everything people ask you to? Do you do everything people ask you to? If the price is right. Hmm. Then can I pay you off? No. I would just take him to the police. He wouldn't fall for that. He knows I wouldn't pay him. But then again, is this any better option? What happened to you? Why are you so angry? Is he, is he really just gonna like tell me about his childhood or something? Fine. I'll double whatever you're being paid. I'll double whatever you are being paid. The knife jetted towards my face, and I swerved desperately to avoid it. I felt it prick my ear. Sorry. I don't welch on a deal. Hmm. What happened to you? What happened to you? Why are you so angry? Stop asking me these stupid questions! I am what I am, alright? <laughs> Tell me more about your childhood. I really don't think that's going to work. Why are you being so defensive? Why are you being so defensive? I am NOT being defensive! <laughs> huh? Gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> Literally speaking, that's true. That is as defensive as you can get, but... Are you hiding from something? Are you hiding from something? What? No! What the hell are you talking about? Hmm. Hmm, how do I play this? Not the last one, but which one of the first two do I go with? Are you hiding behind that knife? Are you hiding behind that knife? I... well... NO! Care to prove it? Care to prove it? What? Go on. You don't need the knife? Prove it. Or are you nothing but a nebbish? You son of a bitch. Huh. I don't need a knife to take your sorry ass. 
<laughs> Old man, you're funny. You think your god's going to help you out of this? Perhaps. Perhaps not. <laughs> but my four years on the B'nai B'rith Yeshiva High School boxing team will even the odds. What the hell, man? Perhaps you didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> now, do I have your attention? Let me go, man. You have two choices. You can answer my questions, or I throw you onto the tracks. What? You're crazy. Am I? Train's coming. Make your choice. Fine. Fine. Who sent you? I... Answer. Zelig. Zelig? He's hooked in deep with the mafioso. Did you know that? He'd find struggling businessmen like your friends Jack and Ethan, and then hook them up with investors. Investors? Mafia investors. He got them involved with the mob? Yes. He got them in debt so deep they needed a tractor to pull them out. When they refused to pay, I was called in to take care of them. So you killed Jack Lauder and Ethan Goldberg? Yes. I see. Well, one question remains. What should I do with you? Just let me go. Well... I'm not, I'm not gonna throw him onto the tracks. I mean, Jesus Christ, no. The train clattered off into the flickering distance, and Joe DeMarco remained unconscious, but alive. Perhaps you still have some purpose to fill. I've done all I can. I've shown mercy. The rest is up to God. A real gentleman. Spare Joe DeMarco. I'm a mensch, whatever that means. I guess it means a, a gentleman. Rabbi Stone is officially a badass. There's a note on the covered up mirror. Hmm. She's not home. A cold, sullen quiet radiated from the wooden panels of the door. Call it intuition. Call it boldness. Call it plain old curiosity. I somehow knew that the door would be unlocked. Hello? Mrs. Lauder? Rodshree? Hello? Oh no. The interior of the apartment was a mess. Chairs were overturned, glasses were broken, and the telltale signs of a struggle were evident. Shit. This wasn't over yet. Not by a long shot. What the hell is going on? Is this a Zelig's doing? But why would he want to take care of her? What did she know that could hurt him? Alright, what is this note? A note? Shalom, Rabbi Stone. Evidently, my associate proved unable to complete his task, as he did not contact me at the usual time. I believe we have business to discuss. Do stop on by. An address on the Upper East Side followed. Zelig. I could have walked away. I was getting Jack's money. I had solved the mystery. My conscience was clear. Yet, the angry cries of a dead man screamed in my soul. Jack, I'm sorry, Jack. As a man, I wished you all the happiness in the world. But as a rabbi, as a religious leader out of duty, I could not accept it. Can you understand? Jack! Jack! Forgive me, Jack. I'm sorry I cast you out. I'm sorry my actions sent you down this path. I... I... Get a hold of yourself, Stone. This isn't your doing. All men have reasons for doing what they do. Some reasons are good, while some others are definitely evil. But most lie somewhere in between. For once, my reasons were crystal clear. Zelig. Zelig. Here we go.
Enter. Rabbi Stone, how good of you to come. You didn't leave me much choice, Rabbi Zelig. That's not entirely fair. You could have walked away. I made a commitment. And you're so good at those, aren't you? Tell me what you want. I only want this, Stone. You're going to walk over to the balcony. Take a nice long look at the view. Enjoy it. It costs a bundle. Then, when you've thought carefully about what brought you here, you're going to jump over the edge. <laughs> really? Really, am I? I don't think that's going to happen, Zelig. Rabbinical response. And why would I do this? How about to save her life? Oh, really? And if I refuse? I shoot her, then you, and throw you both off the balcony. I'd prefer to avoid complications, but it's the same to me either way. You think you'll get away with this? You have no idea what you're messing with, Stone. This goes way beyond you or me. I don't claim to see what lies beyond. All I see is a man charged with leading his people, but instead leads them to their deaths. It's not that simple, Stone. It never is. Pull your head out of the clouds and take a look around. This is how the world works. So, are you going to jump? Or is this going to get messy? Oh. It's going to get messy. Grab his gun. Uh, can I save, by the way? I, I, it doesn't seem like I can save. That is unfortunate, because my last save game is from... The bar, I think? Yeah. Anyway, grabbing his gun would be stupid, because I'm way too far away to get to it. Ah, uh, shit. Ah... Uh. If I refuse, he might just shoot her right now. I doubt he would. What if I... I'm, I guess I'll agree to it for now? Alright. You win, Zelig. You hold all the cards. Good boy. He can be taught. Start walking. Now, open the door, Stone. He's not actually going to go through with it, is he? Wait. There's one more thing. He moved the gun off of me and pointed it straight at, I, once again, I forgot how to pronounce her first name, Miss Lauder. Uh, wait. Is he going to... Hmm. Rabbinical. Why do you want to do this, Rabbi Zelig? Zelig! You! You son of a... DeMarco, you idiot! It's not enough you bungle your assignment. You show up here? Did anyone follow you? I want my money! You want what you deserve? Fine. <laughs> what? Are you going to say he didn't deserve it? I think it's Radshri. Radshri? I took a quick glance at Radshri. I couldn't help but think that a close call had been made. He certainly served his purpose. Now, move. All this bloodshed sickens me. Oh, does it? Hmm. I need to get close. I can't grab his gun now. It's way too far away. Stall him. I... Can it, Stone? You're on the edge. Now die with dignity and jump! I notice he got closer. Stall again. I... Nothing you can possibly say will change things, Stone. Am I close enough? No. Am I... No. Climb over the edge. Well, what are you waiting for? Hmm. I could admire the view. No. I could actually jump? By the way, I think this game has multiple endings. 
from what I remember reading on the website, it does have multiple endings. So I believe what I do here does actually change what happens. Hmm. Hmm. Let's admire the view. Just admiring the view. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? Now he's looking away. But he's not close enough for me to grab his weapon, right? Is it? Is it? I, it doesn't look like he's close enough. Maybe. No. Climb back onto the balcony. Having a change of heart? Well, make up your mind. Hmm. Alright. Alright, climb over the edge. Well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> back to the admiring the view, I guess? Just... Yes, it... Should I... I, there's nothing else I can do. I can either jump or grab his gun. Okay, fingers crossed. I hope I'm close enough. Zelig. Zelig. <clears throat> the gun was too far away from where I was sitting. Shit. Stole him. I... Nothing you can possibly... Nah, it's not gonna work. Do I have to... Do I have to jump? There's nothing else I can do. Unless I can do it from here. Having a well. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> the bullet caught me in the left arm. The pain, the pain flared like a supernova. The is irritating. Now, jump. Well, you're closer now. You are closer. You're closer. You think a bullet in the arm's gonna stop me? You have another thing coming, Zelig. Well, what are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? Look at the view. Just admiring the view. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Oh, is it still too far away? Having a change of heart. Well, no, I didn't have a change of heart. I was just thinking. I think I'd like another bullet inside of me. Could you please shoot me again? My right shoulder exploded into a fiery furnace of pain. Black dots dotted in front of my vision as I struggled to keep focus. Your capacity for pain is indeed impressive. I'm almost tempted to watch you bleed where you stand, but time is short. Now jump or die. <laughs> he thinks he can stop me. Oh no, this is the one. This is the one. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm just, I just keep admiring the view. Just. Yes. Is this the one? Yep. Weak from blood loss, I couldn't keep my hold on the gun. It slid out of, it slid out of my fingers like melting butter. You, you momzer, you are a nothing. What's this? You think you can knock me out like some common street punk? He was old and certainly not as strong as me. But those two bullets had taken their toll. I am Amos Zelig. I've spearheaded the strongest Jewish synagogue in Manhattan for over 30 years. Who are you, little rabbi? Hmm. Who do you think I am? Who do you think I am? Those tricks won't work with me, Stone. I've been playing that game since you were knee-high to my tukus. You think you can out-rabbi me? <laughs> yes, I do. You call yourself a Jew. You call yourself a Jew? You call yourself a hero? How can you face God, knowing what you've done? How can you face God? God, knowing what you've done. God knows more than anyone how the world works. I'm sure he understands. Huh. <laughs> yeah, right. Are you happy with this life? Are you happy with this life, Zelig? Yes. Are you? Hmm. Is 
Is this how a rabbi acts? Is this how a rabbi acts? This is how the world acts. Oh, I see. Am I being pushed to the side? I am. You really call yourself a Jew? You really call yourself a Jew? You really call yourself a hero? I think we're back to this. When should I throw a punch? It's weird, this is a mixture of dialogue and also just like a, f a, s a fight. You really think God will understand your actions? You really think God will understand your actions? God knows what is necessary. I'm sure he understands. Throw a punch? It worked. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to die? Are you? No, I'm not. You think you can win this fight? Now let's do that. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, shit. You really think you can win this fight? You think you can shut up? No, I can't. Just give up. Why don't you just give up? Why don't you just die? Is all this worth your soul, Zelig? I'm not giving up my soul for anything, Stone. Is all this worth your life? Okay, I'm seriously losing here. Holy shit. I'm doing really bad. Are there others like you? More than you can possibly imagine. I'm not exactly sure what to do for a strategy here. You really think you can win this fight? Do you think you can stop talking long enough to throw a punch? Um, I could, sure. God damn, oh, fuck! I'm gonna die because I'm incompetent at this punching game. It's a mixture of a dialogue and a punching game. This is very strange. Never done this before in a game. How can you live with yourself? With power, respect, and money. I manage quite well. How can anyone respect you? Power breeds respect, Stone. But you've never had either, have you? Oh my god. When am I supposed to punch? Just how many others are there? As I said, more than you can possibly imagine. Okay, that actually worked somehow. I have no idea. There's some sort of weird internal logic to how I'm supposed to be winning this fight, but I don't get it. Don't you know who I am? Don't make me laugh. You think you're special? Last chance. You want to give up? No. Do you want to die? <clears throat> Apparently I do want to die, because I'm about to. People really respect you after all this? I already told you, Stone. Power breeds respect. But you wouldn't know what that's like, would you? This is turning into the most impotent and pathetic final fight scene ever possible. The fight scene where the hero is totally incompetent and takes punches for like 10 minutes. Oh, look! I'm, I'm fucked. Are you ready to meet I'm just God gonna skip through these, because it's like the same God thing. In my own time, Stone, but not yet. Like, most of these are kind of th the same. Okay, that one actually worked. I, I don't know what... I don't know. You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. I ask again. I have all the prestige and respect money can buy, Stone. I live quite comfortably. You don't fear for your soul, Zelig? I fear nothing. Do you fear for your life? No, I don't. Actually, yes, I do, because I'm about to die. Jesus. And yeah, I think there that's it. you have it. Do you have anything further to say before Deathstone? Yes. Rabbinical response. Is there anything to say? <laughs> A rabbi to the end. Goodbye, Stone.
<laughs> there we go. I totally failed it. They say a man's life passes before his eyes at times like these. But all I could see were the high rises of Manhattan, crowding themselves around me like a concrete womb. The harsh, unyielding pavement comes ever closer, and I can't help but wonder. Did I honestly try as hard as I could? I fought him. I, stu I stood up to him. I did the honorable thing. Yet, I failed. Was this outcome inevitable? I guess I'll never know. Oh, bullshit! Yes, I'll know! Come on, that's basically the game just told me, you suck. The game basically just told me, you suck, stop sucking. Which almost feels insulting, frankly. But I do want to get a better ending, I just, I don't know what the hell I was supposed to do there. I, I don't, I don't see any logic to, to connect the dialogue to the right point to punch at. I don't get it. Um, but unless there's an auto, is there an autosave? There might be an autosave. Okay, but when is it from? Let's find out. Oh, is this when I go to his residence? Okay, let's try this again, shall we? Enter. I wonder if I, I wonder if I should have this go a different way, or if I should just do it the same way, but then just don't mess up the fight. Um. What should I do? I don't know, let's try it a little bit differently. You can forget it. Oh, really? Not even to save her life? You bargain with a woman's life? You can go to hell. To touchstone, your loyalty to this Shiksa is admirable. But I have no love of either of you. I can just as easily shoot her, then you, and throw you both off the balcony. I'd prefer to avoid complications. But it's the same to me either way. You think you'll get away with this? You have no idea what you're messing with, Stone. This goes way beyond you or me. I don't claim to see what lies beyond. All I see is a man charged with leading his people, but instead leads them to their deaths. It's not that simple, Stone. It never is. Pull your head out of the clouds and take a look around. This is how the world works. So, are you going to jump? Or is this going to get messy? Well, grabbing his gun would be incredibly dumb right now, so... Let's try refusing this time. No. I won't do it. Very well. Holy... You shot her! What? You're surprised? I gave you ample warning. So, are you going to jump? Or am I going to shoot you too? I warn you. I won't make your death as quick as hers. Holy crap! I didn't think he would actually do that without any warning. Holy shit. Um, hmm. I shouldn't have refused. I'm glad I didn't refuse before. I wish I didn't refuse this time. Um, well, fuck. I, now I just want to go back to my save game, but I can't actually enter the menu. Let me out! I could close the game, I suppose. Um, in fact, let, let's, let's do that. I'm just gonna close the game here. And, um, let, let, let's try that again, shall we? This is a very strangely set up ending, to be frank. Yeah, very, very strange. Here we go. Hold on, I think this... Yeah, that resets. <laughs> Try this again! Enter. You don't... You I can't tell... You're taking... The, you're... I have to... I just go rabbinical. Agree this time. All right. You could... Start to walk. And then someone's gonna show up. Now. Wait, there is one. Why 
do you want to? Zelig! You! You son of a! DeMarco, you idiot! It's not enough you bungle your assignment. You show up. I want. You want. <laughs> what? Hey, sir. Now, all this. Alright, well, I know what to do here, right? Is there any way to do this without... No, I, I need to get closer to him, so... Your bravo now! Your cup I'm on, but time now... Alright. Can it? You're on the edge. Well? I have this down to a science. Just... Yes, it... Here we go. You... You are... What's this? You th I am... I... Who okay, can I not totally fuck this up? Is this how... This is how... <laughs> that one worked. I don't know why. You call your... You call your... That one didn't work. That just erased my progress. I, I don't get the logic here. I is there a logic? It can't be random, surely. Surely there's supposed to be some skill to winning this fight, but how? How can I- Power, but you've- Are there more than- <laughs> That one worked? I'm- Like, is there- I I'm looking down at the text. Is there something in his, like, posture that's changing? Who do you to indicate that I can punch? All streaks won I've been playing that- You think you- Okay, he didn't- He didn't move. You- You're- I don't notice any change in his posture. There's gotta be something. How can you- God, I'm sure- That one worked, but there was no change in his posture. I don't get it. I don't see a connection between, like, his posture and when to throw a punch. I don't see a connection between the words. Like, it doesn't seem like there's any point in the argument where I'm winning, and that's the point where I can throw a punch and it'll be successful. It just- I don't- I don't see it. Are you happy with the- Yes. Are you? Don't you- Don't you think you're- Of course, it didn't work. Why don't- Why don't you- Because I'm gonna punch you in the face. Or not. I'm probably just gonna lose this again. Is all- I'm not giving- Is all this- What the fuck? <sighs> uh, I don't get it. How can do you do you trust me? Can you say you really? I t this is get you. No, I won't get used to it. How can with power I manage? People, I already power, but you would not. Mm. Are you? Are you? You really? You think you can? Last chance. Last chance. No. Great, I took an extra punch there. You re God, no, I'm sure he Do I actually need to get him to the other side, or just, do I just need to, like, last long enough? I noticed there's new dialogue options that kind of seem to open up. Are you ready? I'll meet God, but not yet. Okay, we're back to the middle, or almost. You do you think you can? I I have all I live. That somehow worked. You don't fear. F I fear. Do you fear? Just as I said, more. And now there's no new options. So I don't know. You real? Do you think you? You... You real? <sighs> and now we're back to the center. You... God, I'm sure. Are you... I... But not yet. You real... I... This... Get used to... You... 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 I'm... <laughs> and I waited too long. 
this, this is, uh, what is even happening here? This is painful. This is painful to play, and I'm sure it's painful to watch. How can you, do you, do you trust me? Can you say? Mm. Like, do I just, is the only way to win this to just memorize exactly what dialogue trees you have to go down to get a punch and then just keep replicating those? Like, that's the only thing I can think of. You really do you think you How can you I, live with yourself? I have, I leave. Is that can I punch him? Okay. How can you I'm gonna write this down, because apparently I have to live with yourself. That's apparently one in which I can punch. You really God knows what I'm sure he Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to meet God is apparently another one. I'm gonna see if there's a pattern here and if you just, every time you go to these dialogue options, it allows you to punch. Hmm. You really- I- This- Get you- How can you live with yourself? I- I have- I live- Yep, apparently every time you do that dialogue option, it allows you to punch. You really got no, I'm sure. Are you ready to meet God? Are Let's see if this works again. Not. <laughs> That's it. You just need to memorize exactly which dialogue ones happen to allow you to punch. That's seriously what you're supposed to do. You really get this should work I, again. I, I, that's it. That that's what you're supposed to do. You got him. And this one will work like again as well. Welp. I guess I figured it out. You I, I And this should probably be this should finish it. Mm-hmm. There we go. Zelig, it's over. What do you have to say for yourself? Mazel tov, Rabbi Stone. <laughs> I applaud you. To have come this far, you certainly are resourceful. Just what are you saying, Zelig? I do remember Jack Lauder. Very well. He came into my office eight years ago, looking to get married. It seemed that this Zionist pig-headed rabbi was against it. Oh, the things he said about you. Imagine my surprise when you showed up in my office. Yeah, I bet you were shocked, all right. I've done some checking up on you. In all these years, you've never learned to make concessions. Concessions? Concessions? The Jewish people are slowly becoming extinct. For thousands of years, we've struggled to keep our place on this planet, and you talk of concessions. As a rabbi, I do everything I can to help. And if that means refusing to conduct an interfaith marriage, then so be it. I can still look at myself in the mirror and call myself a rabbi. What are you, Zelig? You're nothing but a common criminal who consorts with gangsters and assassins. We all have our place in the big machine, Stone. And you? You're just a tiny squeaky wheel. Now be a good cog and just let me go. I know you don't have the guts to throw me over. Oh, you're challenging me. <laughs> he wants me to. Obviously, he wants me to throw him over. But nope. I'm not going to. And now I just totally forgot how to pronounce her name. R rat Rashri? R Rashri? Was still bound and gagged. Her eyes shined with relief. I quickly untied her. So, it's over? It's over, Mrs. Lauder. We'll leave Rabbi Zelig for the police. You're... You're hurt! You're bleeding all over! It'll be okay, Mrs. Lauder. Okay? You were shot! It's alright, let's just get out of here. Well, all right, if you say so.
Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, Mrs. Lauder. Call me Raj, please. After all this, I think you deserve it. But we're going to the hospital and no argument. Sure. An example to us all. Ubermensch. <laughs> they both survived. Atzai melech shemo nikra The weeks sped by. Jack's bestowal arrived in the mail, and I was able to appease all my debts. Thanks to an anonymous tip, the police picked up Amos Zelig before he regained consciousness. He even tried to tell them that I attacked him, but thankfully Rashri testified on my behalf. Back to the grind. Another week? Another Shabbos. Has anything changed for me? Not really. Thank you, Canner Kaplan. Debts still pile up, but they won't be a problem as long as Jack's money holds. After that, it's best not to think about it. Is it only in the aftermath of pain that we are justified in questioning God's fairness? Just how much pain must occur to legitimately raise the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Just how much pain. Then it hit me. God might not seem fair. We may not always feel connected to him. That is, we may feel lonely, and often do. Yet the underlying reality of our lives is that we are always connected, whether we feel it or not. Whether we accept it or deny it, the connection is there. And since we are connected, we are responsible. Battling for goodness is how we give our lives meaning. Maybe there are no answers. Ultimately, we may never find that elusive truth. Yet ultimately, we may find something else. Meaning, significance, and fulfillment. If so, that may be enough. Dear God, I hope that's enough. The end. Hmm, do you think there's an end scene? An after credit scene? I wonder. Alright, let me get my post game stretching. Uh. Oh, apparently the backgrounds were done by Tom Scary. That's a very interesting last name. Scary. Can you imagine someone addressing you as, Hello, Mr. Scary. I guess the credits... Oh, the credits are probably going to be very short. Because it's such a small game. So let's see if there's a credit, uh, scene after the credits. <laughs> Special thanks to coffee. Lots of it. Oh, that's the credits for the remastered edition. Oh, the backgrounds for the remastered edition were done by Ben Chandler. Ah, oh, don't you just love Ben Chandler? He is so awesome. And the animations also. Awesome. That explains why the backgrounds are so beautiful. Anything Ben Chandler touches turns out amazing looking. Alright, um, well, I guess while I'm waiting for the credits to finish, I'll start analyzing it. Yeah, there's definitely, there's quite a bit to talk about, um, and I think, okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start by talking about everything but the end scene of the game. So let's start with that. Let's see if anything happens here, though. <laughs> Voice actor bloopers. Oh, that's gotta be good. Oh my god. Rushery becomes Irish. <laughs> 
I need to try some of these. Let's let's just try one. Okay, let's just try one. There is a time and a place, Rabbi. And this is not it that is Irish. <laughs> Hearts, moon, stars, clovers. <laughs> it's because I'm saying... <laughs> this is a hard one. Hold on. <laughs> uh, oh, I, oh, God. I really want to... I want to, like, just listen to them all before even doing anything else. Um... Uh... No, okay, I won't, I won't, because I'll just get sucked into it. So let me collect my thoughts, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, I think my thoughts are collected. So again, let's just let's just ignore that the end, the whole ending part even happened. Just for right now, let's just pretend that doesn't exist. Okay. It had really, really good art. In, in general, I'm just really impressed with it. Great art, which is no surprise, it's, you know, done by Ben Chandler, of course. Anything he makes looks amazing. The music... The music is very, very good. The writing is very strong. Very well written. Well developed characters. Interesting characters. Uh, the voice acting is very good. It's I mean, You can tell that the voice actors didn't have... Uh, by and large, didn't have professional microphones. Like You could tell that the microphones were cheap, but the acting itself was very good. And honestly, I think if you have good acting, you really don't need a microphone that's that good. You really don't need it. I mean, it's good to have a, a good microphone, of course, but... But it doesn't really take me out of it too much to have a low-quality microphone, so long as the acting is good, and it was. It was very good. The puzzles were... really good, actually. Surprisingly good. There's, there's really no times where you're collecting about a million objects to stuff into your inventory, as you see in a lot of adventure games, where you're just collecting random stuff that makes no sense. No, it was very sensical. I don't think you ever had more than... I don't think you ever had more than three items in your inventory, right? You had the, the Yiddish dictionary. You had your ID, and then you had... Or, or your business card, whatever that was. And then you had the business card of... Uh, the other rabbi. What was his name? Jesus, I've already forgotten it. Amos... Amos what? Amos something. Whatever his last name was. Yeah, so you never really had more than three items in your inventory. Which is very good. You're not picking up random stuff. That was nice. And the way the puzzles were designed were just... They just made sense, you know? It's just... It's real-world, sensical stuff that you would try to do if you were investigating... Something. And trying to figure out what's going on. If you were being a detective, what would you try to do? Well, you wouldn't do incredibly absurd things. You would do stuff like... I'm going to hack into this person's email account. And read their correspondences, which is exactly what you did. Or I'm going to look at their ledgers. Look at all their transactions. And see who they've been gi giving money to. And then I'm going to search for these people and find their addresses and whatnot. You know, it's just, it's just down-to-earth, real-world stuff that you're doing. And none of it was absurd, you know? It all just fit into what was happening in the story, which was very nice. That's, that's surprisingly rare in adventure games. So they really, in general, nailed the puzzles. The only one that was kind of weird, and again, we're ignoring the end, the only one that was um, kind of weird was the very first one where you had to find out your own password. And I still don't know how you could have found that out by logic. It seems like you just ha would have had to try every word in your dictionary to find out that, what was it, y Yenta or whatever, was the password? The, I guess, Yiddish term for a busybody? Like, unless I'm missing something, it didn't seem like there was any real reason to try that other than just trying everything. So I'm not sure what that was about. That one was weird. But at least the puzzle, like, what you were trying to do made sense. It wasn't something absurd. You are just trying to log into your own computer. That's, that's you know, that makes sense. That's a down-to-earth thing to do. How you had to go about doing it was, I don't know, confusing. I'm glad I got the hint on that one, because trying to figure that out, I guess, would have been pretty much impossible. I would have just had to try everything on everything. Yeah. But aside from that, the puzzles were really good. Very good. It was fun detective work. Um, if anything, I wish you actually could do more detective work than, than what I got to do. The whole mechanic of being able to drag a clue onto another clue to combine them. Like like combining, uh, what was it, JDM with uh, Joe DeMarco. Combining those and, and realizing, oh, those are the same people. You know, that's fun. I like that. 
I wish I got to do more of it. It was just fun detective work, you know? It's fun to hack into people's email address, uh, email accounts and just read all of their all of their correspondences that you're not supposed to be reading and just putting these clues together. And everything just fit in a really satisfying way. Like when I was finding out about Joe DeMarco and I realized that Joe DeMarco met Jack at the temple. And that, um... And that, uh, Goldberg had set up Jack with Joe DeMarco at the temple. And Goldberg was the uh, accountant for, I'm trying to remember the names, for the uh, Charming Fashion Company. You know, just the way all these clues fit together was was satisfying and fun to discover. So the puzzles were really good. And now, that that's that's kind of my analysis of everything except the end of the game. Now, we come to the end of the game. Let me take a sip of tea. Oh, the tea is cold. Damn it. That's wonderful. Oh boy, the end of the game. Oh boy. That... Mm. I'm, I'm really... I'm so unhappy with the end of the game. Just, it was... Uh, it was doing so good. It was doing really, really good. It was such a good game until the end part. And that end fight... Just that end fight was horrible. I can't even comprehend how how bad it was. It just makes me so sad that such a good game had such a bad last encounter in it. This just this bad thing. I, I guess you'd call it a puzzle. Bad puzzle. I mean, it really was basically just a puzzle. A fighting puzzle. A fighting dialogue puzzle. It was just... Oh. It like feels like it spoiled the whole thing. It was going so well. And now I'm trying to scrub that from my mind so that it doesn't infect the rest of the game. Okay, so what what do I think was wrong with the the end fight? Um I'm not sure how well I talked about it while I was doing the fight or how well I expressed myself, but just to examine it a bit. It is the most mechanical and repetitive and immersion breaking sort of scene you could like you could practically possibly have as far as i could tell from the entire encounter going through it twice there was no logic really no no reason no real world reasoning for when you were able to actually get a successful punch on him and when you weren't. I looked for changes in posture, thinking maybe he was letting his guard down. Maybe he was lowering his hands when you when you said something that made him doubt himself, you know? And then you could get a punch in. Nope. He, his posture doesn't change. I was thinking maybe you, when you're winning in the argument, that is giving you the upper edge, and you can punch him. But not really, because he seems to never be losing the argument. He seems to always have the upper hand. Like, you know, are you... What about when you meet God? Aren't you worried about your soul? Nope. Are you happy? Yep. Just, he doesn't care. It doesn't seem like there's any way to win the argument, so there's no logic there for when to strike. It turns out the only logic that I could find is just that after you say certain things, seemingly randomly, they allow you to punch. And so what you have to do is either memorize those or do what I did, which is write them down. And then every time you find those exact sentences again... Every single time, you will be able to punch him. So it's a matter of just... Of just doing every one, testing it, remembering which ones work, writing them down or remembering them, and then just exploiting that. And that's how you win the fight. That... It's so mechanical. That's about as mechanical as you can get. And all the while, the fact that you have to do the... You have to say the same words again to be able to punch... Punch him you have to say the same sentences, means that you're saying dialogue that you've already said before, which basically guarantees that you're just going to skip it. So it's an end fight that's incredibly mechanical, where you have to just memorize these arbitrary openings, or write down or memorize these arbitrary openings, 
that allow you to punch him, and all the while saying things that you've already said before. Like, you can't get more immersion breaking than that. And annoying. And just, it just felt like a waste of time. It should have been such an epic scene. I mean, this is a hostage situation. You know, you have a hostage and you have a guy that just showed up at the house and he died, he was shot. And now he's trying to um, get you to jump off the freaking edge. You're fighting for your life. That's an epic scene. That's cool. It should have been something epic. But instead, it just all came crashing down to this incredibly mechanical and mind-numbing experience. Filled with just repetition. It was like, it's like a 20 freaking minute fight. If you include both times, I guess. It might have actually been 20 minutes. If you, I don't know, if you count it up, maybe it is. In total, 20 minutes of fighting. I'm sorry, but boss, like, boss fights, epic fights usually shouldn't be that long. You can only say, you can only have the, uh, the protagonist and the antagonist say interesting sort of epic end scene things to each other for so long before you just need to end the freaking fight. Just, ugh. and the fact that I failed the first time, uh, when I failed the first time and he just threw me over. The, the game started, uh, like, talking in character and saying, like, something like, had I really tried hard enough? And that, that left a bad taste in my mouth. Something about that I found very obnoxious and insulting. It's like the game was saying, you didn't try hard enough, you suck. And all the while I'm thinking, I tried as hard as I possibly can. I used logic and I tried to find... You know, when I'm supposed to be able to punch, but I couldn't do it. I tried hard, but yet the game basically said, you suck. You didn't try hard enough. Like, really? I don't... I don't think the developers meant it to come across that way, but that's how it came across to me, and that was almost, frankly, insulting. It's like, really? I just... I just tried as hard as I could. And went through this mind-numbing fight, and then you just basically practically insult me. I don't think they meant to. I seriously don't think the developers would mean to insult you, but that's that's how it came across for some reason. Very strange. So just that whole last fight was just ugh, mechanical and mind-numbing and oh, just really badly designed. And it's such, it's such a shame that that's on the end of such a good game. You know, the last thing you want a player to experience is not the worst part of the game. If anything, you'd want to leave them with the best part. But it's like, this is great. You know, going through the game, this is great, this is great, this is great, this is great, and then, ugh, and then it ends. Just, oh, that makes me so sad. It didn't, it didn't ruin the whole game for me. Don't get me wrong, the rest of the game is still really, really good. It's just that it leaves such a sour taste in my mouth. I wonder how that end fight was in the original non-kosher edition. You know, did they change it at all? Was that in the original? I'm curious. If anyone knows, if anyone's played the original, uh, let me know if they changed that fight at all. I'm curious if it if it got better, if it got worse, or if it's just the same. I don't know. So yeah, how do I... Uh... I'm still not sure what I think of the game as a whole. Because it has such a good part to it, which is the vast majority of the game. Like the first two and a half, three hours are just really good. And then the last half hour or so was just really bad. The writing didn't get bad. I mean, the actual end end, like after the fight and there's a little kind of wrap up epilogue. That was good. That was really good. But just the fight leading up to the end. Ugh. So I'm not sure what to make up, uh, what to, what to make of the thing as a whole. I don't know. It's such, a, it's such a weird just change to have it go from so good to so bad for that one scene. I don't know. It's just really strange. But anyway, overall I really enjoyed it. It's just the end part. Everything up to it was really good and, enjo and enjoyable and just well done. So yeah, hopefully 
you enjoyed coming with me on this journey. Through this game that is so damn good, and so damn strange towards the end. It's an interesting look at Wedged Eye Games' uh, history. Although, again, I'm not sure how much of a good look it is at their history, because I don't know what they changed and what they haven't from the original, so it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I don't know if they majorly changed the gameplay or what. Hmm. But, anyway, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, I was just going to say. Again, I really like Wadged Eye Games. They made the Blackwell series, which is awesome. They published Gemini Rue, which is a really good game. And they made this, which is also a really good game. So, I'm totally going to be keeping a, keeping an eye on everything else they make. Because they make very good stuff. In fact, there's a another Blackwell game coming out pretty soon? Well, I don't know if it's soon, but it's coming out at some point. So that's going to be really cool. I think that's, that's probably the next thing they're going to release, I would imagine. So yeah, I'm totally going to be playing that when it comes out. Alright. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed my playthrough of The Shiva. Apparently it's not Shiva. At least Stone pronounced it Shiva. The Shiva, Kosher Edition. Thanks for watching.